Morning, so I'm pretty excited about today because today I'm going to be riding with Steve Jockey, aka the Pocket Rocket, a bit of a cycling legend from the 80s, and he's going to take me out some of the old training roads of Staffordshire, Shropshire, and Cheshire. So let's get rolling. You guys can see, well, you can see this, it's right behind me, but these are the National Champs jerseys. I'm down here at Provision, this is the business that Steve Jockey, the Pocket Rocket, runs uh, and owns, and these are his National Champs jerseys. How cool is that? So you've got, I know you've got a junior title here too senior titles here as well absolutely phenomenal there's an old race bike of steve's there at the same time for flick round this side you're going to see i think this is a, a milk race yellow jersey green jersey we'll ask steve about that at some point as well so if you get a chance guys come down here have a chat with steve come and check out some of the mega kit these guys have got and let's go for a ride as he's here this is in the pocket rocket steve jockeying himself and he said to me he's got a little treat for me so what's this climb that you've got in store well, it's just obviously it's just down the road from Provision, actually. So um, it's Penkel Bank, uh, 1987. Uh, Tour of Britain stage went through there. Went from um, Stockport into Buxton, um, over Axe Edge, then into Leek, and then over Ladbridge, and then actually come down past the bottom of the road here, past Stokes train station. And then um, the organizer um, had a great idea. We'll do four laps of Penkel Bank. Um, which is one of the steepest climbs in Stoke, so um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for me today, mind you, but it was easier on that day. Right, let's go and check that out then, eh? Today, I've got to ask you about the rock. You're a Manx man. I mean, it's quite a small population over there, but you seem to be producing uh, some absolutely quality cyclists over the year with yourself. Obviously, you've got Johnny Bellis, Kenick, uh, Cavendish right now. W what is it about that place? Well, it's a uh, quarter mile piece of tarmac that goes round now to the NSC. It used to be the King George V bar. Uh, go went round two football pitches now. Uh, then now it's got a uh, sports centre in the middle of it, and uh, this race is there every Tuesday night during the summer months. Starting off with waves, first wave off will be the likes of uh, Strider bikes, and it works all the way up to the uh, to the to the juniors. And they'll have three they'll have 300 riders down there on a on a Tuesday. And wow. out of that. Out of that 300 riders, um, you've got uh, you know a number of uh, world-class bike riders that have come out of there. Not just men, but women as well. You know, you've got Anna Christensen. You know, you've got Rob Holden's daughter as well. Uh, and it's uh, it's a real it's really nice to see kids getting away from the likes of the get playstations and you know and things like that as well, and getting them out and. You know, it's a great, uh, a great environment to be in uh, cycling. Uh, you make some great friends, lifelong friends. You know, I started at the age of 14. I was blessed that I actually found it through a friend, and you know, it's shaped my life ever since, really. So, Steve, you've got multiple national champs jerseys at the shop. So do you want to give us a bit of background on those? Yeah, uh, so the first one was um, 1977, which was the National Junior Road Race, which was uh, held on the Isle of Man. Uh, a lot of pressure, but I seemed to uh, perform well in them type of circumstances. And then the next one was uh, 1984, which was the biggie really, which was the National Professional Road title. And uh, I was fortunate again that that was held, that was held on the Isle of Man and I managed to, uh, to take what was left of the bunch sprint at the end of that one, which was 142 mile. <coughs> and I uh, loved that one then. Four years later, 
and one of the cannon in Shropshire, uh, in Newport, Shropshire. And, um, so again, not too far away from what you, I guess you consider a hometown now as well then? Yeah, exactly, yeah, so that was, uh, that was a tough day. Well, they were all tough days, but uh, it means a lot to ride with them. With that white jersey and the, you know, the red and blue bands on it. You know, it's, uh, it's quite an achievement. And uh, I'm just blessed that I've actually managed to do it. So you're telling me, Steve, Kellogg's Tour of Britain, that uh, Penco Bank, and you won that stage, but you, you rode it in, in fear or something, you were saying? Yeah, well, the, the day before was the uh, was the big stage, really. It was from uh, Newcastle one time to Manchester, which is 176 mile. Uh, it was a 12 noon start, and I rolled into uh, Manchester with Dudley Hayton and Phil Baton. We were, we'd lost 20 minutes on the leading group. And uh, I can still remember getting my legs done at one o'clock in the morning. Um, and then obviously the next stage was uh, was this one that went through Stoke-on-Trent and I was in a word sort of shit myself really because I thought all the, all the locals would be out, all my mates would be out on Penkel Bank watching us going up there and I knew how much I suffered the, the day before when we had something like 10,000 metres of climbing to do, something daft uh, and I thought I was going to be in for a for a bit of a hide and going through the uh, edge of the Peak District and into Stoke the next day, but I was floating a uh, tremendous form. And uh, you know, when we got to that horrible hill, Penkle Bank, um, I was in the leading group going over there. There's myself, Adrian Timmers, Paul Watson, and Paloff, the Czech who's riding for ANC. And uh, that's the way it sort of panned out then for the rest of the day. So, four of you went away on that climb. Yeah, four of us went away on the climb. I had Neil Martin up the road. I was working in the same team, so I could sit on for a bit. And then when Neil came back, um, we all started to get a little bit more tactical then because A and C, Alfred's Lycra, and Interrep were all, all all different teams, but they were all part of one really. So um, it was a right uh, game of. Uh, you know, sort of, there's a lot of negotiation going on in the boardroom at the time, as you could say, uh, to keep to keep us away because we actually got rid of Paloff and Paul Watson, and uh, there's just myself and Stuart Coles left, and that's the way it stayed all the way into Birmingham. Stoke and going over the top of that bloody climb, Penkel Bank, you know, they've voided like the plague for 30, <laughs> 30 odd years. Have, have you been up that since? Is that the first time you've been up yep. since yep, the I've Tour been of up, Britain? Every now and again I'll go up in the car and I'll have a bit of a reminisce and I still can't believe that we went up there four times in the middle of a stage and we, then we had another 50 odd mile to go, you know. Um, uh, it's, it's a horrible thing. You know, I was absolutely <laughs> blown out of my ear I was going up there this morning. You know, thank God I didn't have my heart monitor on. You know, I might have been smoke coming off it. <laughs> it's the same yeah, for me, that's yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, 
cheers for that see that was a really enjoyable ride it's not often we get summers and days like this in the uk that very often so we've got to make the most of it yeah it's, uh, it's been a belter um dry not too windy um and it's nice to get out of work for a couple of hours <laughs> yeah, i'm sorry i dragged you out of work for a couple right, of hours you were telling us about your, your national champs jerseys and, and obviously there's there's many many standout moments if i look down your palmaras and uh, anyone can you know i'll leave a link in the description actually in wikipedia to, to steve's wikipedia page and you can see some of the the amazing um rides and, and races that steve's won um when when was your last professional race um the last professional race was um I think it was a mountain bike race in 1993, I think, um, somewhere. Uh, but I reckon we, we proper, uh, you know, there was the, it was 90, probably 92, when, um, when, when the, when, you know, I decided to uh, to call a day with professional racing, you know, because the uh, the bottom had fallen out, the, uh, out of uh, the sponsorship markets in the, in the UK uh, domestic cycling professional scene. Which is such a shame, really. Yeah, but it went so quickly, um, and obviously you've you've got bills to pay and um, and stuff, and you know, and we we had to uh, to get on with it and um, and uh, you know just get out there and get a day's get a get a day's work done. But it was a hard transformation because I mean, I said rode my bike full time since the, you know from the age of nineteen right the way through till I was thirty three. You know that was my job, and then um, it was back out there, and you know out, out into the out into the real world, really. I know we're we're going to have a chat about that on a on a different day, aren't yeah, we? But yeah, yeah. Uh, anyone who's who's read your biography probably yeah. has a you know an understanding of there were some darker days, I guess, in yeah, between yeah, yeah. in between the finish of your your professional career and yeah. now. But yeah. uh, but now you know we, we see yeah. you out on the bike pretty lo pr quite a bit locally now, I guess, around Staffordshire and, and Cheshire. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, say I've always been in and out, in and out, you know, and then I get bored with it, and then I you know uh, put a bit of weight on and stuff, but. You know, since um, about mid of mid 2017, um, you know, I've got myself, I found myself, you know, the love of the bike again. Um, I don't like to go out and hurt myself too much. I like to have a dig in every now and again. The com competitive edge never goes away. Yeah, I saw that. You know, but <laughs> um, you, uh, I, I don't mind having a go out for 10 mile, have a go out for 35 mile, you know, or every now and again I'll throw a long one in, you know, if, if it's a sensible, sensible steady group. But, I don't like hurt myself anymore, you know, I like to see, uh, I like to see, you know, see the countryside now when I'm riding rather than just concentrating on rear mechs and back wheels, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, cause that's what, uh, you know, some people say to me, oh, you, you know, you travel all over the world, right, racing, you know, you must have seen some lovely places, you know, and say, I have been to some lovely places, you know, but um, all you basically see when that flag drops down is back wheels, backsides and team cars, you know, and um, and then your hotel room after, you know, I felt as if, you know, from the age of uh, 19 right the way through to the finish, all I've done is lived in hotels. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but um, I suppose it was blessed really, you know, it's been a fantastic, you know, fantastic town. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd say you're not taking it uh, too seriously now, but I I remember this winter seeing you some Strava ride. Uh, Zwift rides popping up this time, so I, I know you've been doing some indoor training over winter this year. Yeah, I mean, say I've got, um, I've, I've been doing a little bit of turbo training, but the, the max for me is like on a, on a turbo, on a normal turbo trainer, even with a video playing, um, it's 30 minutes for me, and my head goes completely off, you know, and um, I, I, I struggle with it all. But since I've got uh, got this riff thing going, and um, it was all sorts of all different rides you can go on, you know. And I know there's people cheating on, there's people, you know, blasting away on electric bikes on it and stuff like that. But so be it, you know. I enjoy it, and uh, you can get stuck in. And I actually done 554 mile in, in January on on Zwift in my garage, <laughs> you know. And that's totally unheard of, you know. And I was like sort of getting getting absorbed. I've got me. I've got the uh, sound bar going and you know I've got you know, it's, it's a total game changer and um, you know you can see what you ride and see your, the power that you're putting out and uh, sometimes I have to put a, a towel over the, over the top of the TV to, to cover the power up because obviously some days I'm absolutely used to it, you know <laughs> but uh, but yeah I enjoy it and uh, I've, you know for me to actually be, be able to go beyond that one hour point on a on a, on a, on a static bike 
you know um but it's just so nice to get your your own road bike on there on the gravel bike now as well yeah gravel bikes uh good um i mean, see, i made a gravel bike uh oh god it must have been about 15 years ago I had an old gt mountain bike you know and i put some drop handlebars on it um and to you know took a few bits and pieces of it you know so that was realistically a gravel bike and then they they come out then you know but yeah i've got a i've got a holdsworth um a holdsworth one you know and i i do like you know because i'm not going for speed or mph anymore miles per hour or, or whatever and there's some cracking rides you can actually do um there's places around even around around stoke where I, you know i've lived there for 30 odd years and uh, that i didn't realize that were there you know that you're actually finding on a on a gravel bike and there's no cars and you know traffic free uh it's good yeah so it's game you know it's, it's good game changer it's good yeah that, not, that sounds appealing yeah not the chain gang get the barbecue going over night time <laughs> i asked steve go gentle on me today because i had a, a tough chain gang on thursday and then i went out on sunday with uh, mark lovett and his motwick crew and took a pasting on sunday as well so thankful that you took it easy for a recovery ride today to be honest Thank you.